Well, <laughs> you know, there are times when I kind of go out there and I just start looking at what's happening in Star Citizen, what other people are doing. And I start watching these videos and I'm just, you know, I'm overjoyed because I'm kind of like, I predicted that was going to happen. <laughs> when I saw these Hercules A2s rolling in on Jump Town 2.0, I just went, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, don't worry, man. You can just shoot the bomb as soon as it leaves the ship and you blow the ship up. Mm -hmm. Good to know. I'll file that away under effective counterplay. But truth be told, it's it's not, you know, a one-size-fits-all Death Star. You know, just like, boom, got them all, and GG. But an interesting thing did happen with the Hercules. Um, I was playing in 316, and I made a, a grim, grim discovery that CIG had broken the Caterpillar once again. <laughs> And I kind of wanted to get some money together to start fitting out chips and uh, start messing around with stuff. And I just went, oh, that's not working, but wouldn't you know it, I guess I get a loner Hercules C2 for, I don't know, being a subscriber or something else. I, I really don't know how I got this, but I've got it. And so I decided to, you know, kind of take it out and uh, do a little uh, do a little mineral work, or not mineral work, but trading. Uh, get some money under my belt because I really haven't done anything since they reset our funds in terms of making money in the game with any kind of real drive or ambition. So I'm basically sitting on bare bones funds. So I just figured I'd try to take this out, and luckily, on my server, one of the events happens to be happening, which is the uh, Nine Tails taking over a space station. And so I just went, well, perfect timing then. And that's one of the kind of cool things about these events, is when you're kind of playing on your own, when an event like this happens, it draws a crowd to the event. Everyone else who isn't going to the event pretty much gets a free pass. And that can be pretty handy if you know how to take advantage of that time. Now, the event itself, Jumptown 2.0, what do I think of it? I, and I think it's kind of a tricky thing. If you think of it in the context of CIG is using this to create this collision point between players within the game where there's a desire for resources and quick money and it's a limited time event that pops up. It's going to draw a lot of people in. Some people just wanting to kill other people. Some people wanting to get the money. And in that, you get that combat. You get that collision between players. And CIG gets to verify, you know, are, is this working? How can we improve it? Blah, 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 blah. Checking out their net code, whatever. If they're using it for that type of thing, then it's actually, like, it's great. It's fantastic. I would prefer it resulted in something a little bit more permanent to the player's account, like armors, like guns, things like that, little souvenirs that you get to take with you that aren't purchased on the uh, store, but rather are acquired through actions in the game. You know, and people say, oh, well, they don't have time to do that. Yeah, they, do. they have time to do plenty of it when they're selling it, but when they're giving it away in game, well, that... That, that takes a long, long time. To, you know, it's how if we, we've only got so many people, you know, guys. But if it were, like, if this were an event that would translate to the live, you know, game release in 2027 um, version of Star Citizen, um, if, it, if it were to translate like it is now, which I would be shocked if it did, um... I would be almost wholly opposed to it. Now, CIG did add in that in the future, it is not going to be scheduled. It is going to be triggered by player actions, which I think is excellent. Big thumb up, heading in the right direction with that. I am very, very pleased to see that. Because um, a scheduled event, it, it would if it was staying as a scheduled event, I, it, that would be awful. 
that that would literally be an invasion from World of Warcraft. You know, when you're just like, oh, the demons are coming down in another hour and you're going to get to do all these little missions here when the demons are out. And it that really doesn't have a place in the Star Citizen universe. But if in an event like this reacts to the actions of the players, the players trigger the event themselves, then I dig it. I think it's awesome. I think it's great. It, it, it really kind of... It depends on how it delivers in the final stage or if this is just something they're using to proof or test something else. Now, of course, some people will look at it and say, oh, this this is not fair. I, you know, I, uh, I jump down 2.0 triggered on my server and I went and with my freelancer and I went to tr try and make money and everybody killed me. Um, this game is terrible and I want a refund. And, you know, <laughs> we know... <laughs> We know that we know those players exist, but the truth of it is, is if you are a player who is playing in a very small, very tight knit org, or if you're playing by yourself, this event is legitimately a godsend for you. Events like this in the game are a godsend for you because that puts everybody else over there. Everyone is looking at the right hand of the magician. No one's paying attention to the left hand. And that's when you can go out and do things that would otherwise be very difficult on your own or very risky. Like loading up a Hercules full of cargo. You have to kind of look at these sorts of things. Like when you look in local and you're trying to think, oh man, is this like a good situation? If this is a bad situation? If you see some people are, you know, chirping back and forth at each other. You know, oh, you know, I'll get you next time. Oh, you, you know, you're a wimp. Of course, you're using this ship. It's overpowered. Blah blah blah. You, and you know, you know, come and get me at all, star bitch. Blah blah blah. You see stuff like that in local. That's perfect. That's that's a okay prime time for the solo player because everyone's over there watching this thing unfold, or a lot of the people who would ordinarily be going after other players are going over there. And so you can go and do your own thing. Let's say you're a miner and you've been out in your prospector and you've been, you know, prospecting, and you've been getting all that ore, taking it to the refinery, and you've been doing the slow boat refine overnight. So you've been building up this huge stock of minerals, but now you got to transport them somewhere where you can sell them for the best price. But man, you don't know what you, maybe you don't want to do that. It's a little bit risky. You don't want to end up getting shot down. If an event like this happens over around Crusader or up around Microtech, that's your window to go and deliver your minerals to Lorville or to Area 18. That's your open door. When you're a solo player, you have to kind of look for these moments or small, you know, small org player. You have to kind of look for these moments when everyone else is looking the other way. Especially like if you're if you're looking at the criminal side of Star Citizen and you're thinking, man, I, I, I really want to get into that. One of the most important things, and it's certainly true in just about every mob movie that you ever see, is when you get a little too big for your britches, when you get it a little too flashy, when too many people know your name, you know, that's when everything starts to unravel. That's when things start to go wrong. The kind of gameplay that you should aim for is the kind where nobody even knew that you were there. A big part of survival for solo players and small orgs is going to be going unnoticed or unnoticed until it's too late if you plan to engage a much larger force with, let's say, guerrilla tactics or something like that. That's like, if you... If you're building an org and you're sitting there and you're saying, yeah, there's probably going to be eight or 12 of us, maybe 20, you should probably be looking more towards how do we kind of get in there and get the thing done without anybody knowing that we're there or situations like that, situations like Jumptown 2.0. Why don't we reserve certain activities for the times when that's going on so everyone else is going to be doing this thing or that thing? That would probably be a much more efficient, uh, efficient use of your time rather than when you're seeing the one guy go in there with his cutlass is like jump town friendly 
Like, no. No, it's not. Though there is one thing about Jump Town 2.0 that I kind of wish that a certain ship was finished so that we could test it. And that ship is, oddly enough, the Argo SRV. One of the things that I would like to know around this ship, you know, the towing ship, is would it be possible in a situation where, let's say, a, a huge org has just had a big fat battle over Jump Town, would it be possible to sneak one of these in there and snag one of the wrecks, or better yet, one of the ships off the ground? Though, I think that that is going to be the type of gameplay is going to be strongly limited. But I'd like to know if it would be possible to go in there and snag a wreck or snag some parts from a destroyed ship and just quickly escape. That would be interesting to me. That would be interesting to see if that you know if that would work because I would I would really love that if that was part of it if that was something that you could do in the game it just fly in with one of these real quick snag a, a great piece of cargo or even when the people are all running out of jump town they're putting all the crates on the ground run in just gr grab a huge clump of them and just fly away that would be utterly awesome either that or you know get in with a regular cutlass black with three or four people in one of the side wastes and just use tractor beam guns to steal everyone else's cargo packages throw them in the cutty and then just fly away real quick that sort of stuff that's the sort of things that i would be looking at with stuff like that and with a small group you can certainly hopefully pull things like that off in star citizen and you know, yeah, there's there's a thing. You know, there's a certain prestige to being in an org that's like we have 20 Hercules A2s and we have 50 Idrises and blah 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 blah. But orgs that can pull those kind of sneaky moves off, to me, those style points are worth more. In terms of just like respect, I I really respect what you did there. That was cool. Versus it's like, oh, you got an Idris, cool. You know, that. That's where my focus would be. Now, as I was going uh, through my little trading adv adventures, I came to Terra Mills to get some hooch to deliver to Grim Hex to kind of end things off. And I noticed this poor fool <laughs> lying face down on the ground. And um, yeah, free stuff. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Um, but I kind of thought about it because as I was kind of going through all this character's possessions and seeing what I could snag and what I couldn't snag, um, I kind of feel like I'm still of the mind that I'm not entirely feeling the idea that we can just, um, That we, that we can lose these items, these basic items like armor, firearms, and uh, ammunition and stuff like that. I almost would like to suggest that maybe a better solution to this problem would be to say that when you purchase something from a shop, you're not really purchasing the item, but you're purchasing the pattern to make the item. And, you know, a thousand years from now, with 3D printers. I'm sure that at most cities and most settlements, you could have access to a 3D printer. And if you purchased the access to that pattern, then you could go into that location and say, oh, I have the you know XYZ pattern on my person. So now I can just go ahead and, you know, just, oh, I, I lost my armor. Oh, well, boop, 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 boop you know, put it in queue in this machine and it just prints it all up for you and you get it all back. It would still preserve the time cost of getting these things back. So it wouldn't be instantaneous because you would obviously have to manufacture them, but it would kind of alleviate the problem of purchasing a thing in the store or earning a thing in the game. Eventually when we kind of get back to that sort of thing and than potentially losing it. It would give people more of a reason to kind of bring these things out rather than, oh, this is too good. I want to keep this safe sort of thing. I don't know. I mean, maybe after you loot an item off of somebody, 
or certain items off of some um, some people because maybe you want to keep certain things locked behind an achievement or an in-game action or something like that but maybe certain patterns of things that you you know you, that you pick up off of people um would be you know copyable you would be able to take that to one of these 3d printers and break it down and then it would say okay now i know how to manufacture this thing and therefore now you the player know how to manufacture it that sort of thing it would i think it it, it would be a good thing but at the same time you know for to kind of preserve the realism of the gun shops and whatnot and the armor shops perhaps the you know the ammo manufacturing still has to happen at the gun shop perhaps the armor manufacturing still has to happen at the clothing or the armor shop but at the same time your options are no longer limited in the you know you might still have to go over to xyz system to get the initial pattern for that gun or for that ammo or for that piece of armor but once you have it then you have it right i think that that would i think that, that would be a fair compromise to kind of maintain that sense of realism and that sense of cost without it being overly punishing i think i think that that would be a fair compromise but yeah, just a few thoughts kind of looking at this stuff. It's going to be interesting to see how Jump Town, if Jump Town were to continue the way it's going, how it would uh, how it would transform in the future, certainly. Because obviously there is a, a very real personal risk that comes with going to Jump Town right now. And we're not really fully facing those risks in star citizen at this point but in the future this is probably an event that just on account of your character having the potential to die that it might become a lot less popular in the future once those real costs start being attributed it's gonna be an interesting thing to watch evolve anyways that's the show for today i hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks for watching for watching so, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in star citizen squadron 42's development please follow please follow please follow us on our social media channels see you soon